So we got some pretty big news tonight. I know that... Uh, big stuff. Big stuff. <laughs> we can talk about that for a minute. Uh, well, let's start with the Coinbase announcement, because uh, that, that, that to me was probably the biggest announcement tonight. And uh, I think so because of the on-ramping now. You, on -ramping now. You, also, you disagreed and said it was Yubi, which is the next thing we can talk about. But let's start with Coinbase. So Coinbase announces today, uh, tonight, that they are going to be accepting EOS and you know, listing it on their exchange. Yeah. How's that going to affect things? Well, hey, you know, uh, <laughs> EOS is number five, right, in all cryptocurrencies and moving on up. So uh, the fact that Coinbase hasn't had it on there has been a little bit suspect to me for a while, right? Why wouldn't number five be on there? Why do you have these other lower level coins? That same thing. Right? So now you see why, because they have said, hey, and I think it ties together with the YubiKey stuff as well, okay. which we can talk about in a minute, but Coinbase says, hey, we're, we're releasing uh, the EOS coin, and if you go to their website of Coinbase, you also see that they don't just talk about the EOS coin, but they talk about EOS IO and the whole network and what's the difference. Just like you know, people would say, well, here's Ethereum and here's ETH. And those are different things, right? Those are different things, Ethereum and ETH. Well, EOS IO and EOS are different things too. So they both have significant importance. So, you know, a lot of people have said, oh, EOS is the uh, Ethereum killer or, or whatever. And people say, oh, there's room for both. And of course there are, there are. But I think tonight, uh, I think with all the announcements, I think we're gonna see a major, major leg up of EOS and EOS IO maybe not as a killer, but as a threat or as a competitor for Ethereum and for ETH. It's right. just, it's just, tonight no, changed I, everything. I am, and for those of you out there, Brian's here as well, um, but I, how, why, how is ETH different than Ethereum? I've never heard that. Really? So uh, ETH is a token, right, that has a value. 266 bucks, I looked at it a little bit ago. Okay. That's great. So that's what I refer to then. That's what ETH is. Ethereum is a network, is a, you know, you write applications and, you know, the ERC-20 tokens and stuff don't have anything to do with with ETH, they're on the Ethereum network. And people, so, so EOSIO is the EOSIO code base and, and chains that you, it's not cha a chain, it's a way to download the code and create your own chain. You know, how many, how many uh, of these other tokens out there are Ethereum based. There's plenty of tokens that are Ethereum based tokens, right? Many right, of them. Right. Um, think about this. Bitcoin came out. And Bitcoin is was was the granddaddy of them all. And Dash and Monero and even ETH Ethereum, excuse me, were copies of the Bitcoin blockchain. Right? So hey, uh, you know, Dash is still a, a top 20 and Monero is a top 20 and these are just copies of Bitcoin that decided to do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. ETH being one of the copies too. But, but most of those copies were still, Bitcoin copies were still basically currency. They're was, proof was of work currencies. Currencies. Exactly. Proof kind of, of work currencies. Kind of a solo application in a way. Yeah, so Bitcoin comes out and little spiders come out of it in Dash and Monero and Ethereum, as right. an example. But then Vitalik said, well, hey, my, my money currency is going to do more than just money. It's, it's, ETH is the money, but Ethereum is the network. Okay. And I've created this programming language, you know, I've, I've adopted this programming language, uh, Solidity, and you can write things in Solidity and create distributed applications. And so people went, oh, that's awesome. So Bitcoin is the granddaddy or the 1.0. Right. The Ethereum ETH on top of the Ethereum network, in my view, is the 2.0, right? And it's proof of work. And they're desperately trying to figure out how to get it to proof of stake. Uh, you know, GPU mining, all that kind of stuff. Right. May not be the thing in 10 years as it was five years ago. Right. Uh, but proof of stake is huge and distributed proof, proof of stake is, is, is huge. And so, you know, not having to program in Solidity, uh, Solidity, is that the right word? That's it, yeah. Um, 
being able to program in languages you know and you went to college for and you got your PhD in. Talk about EOSIO. Is EOSIO can be programmed in lots of different languages. So that's a big jump. Uh, proof of stake instead of proof of work is a big jump. Distributed proof of stake is a big jump. And then the things we heard tonight is a more of a jump. So truly the EOSIO is a third gen blockchain technology where Ethereum network is a 2.0 technology okay. and Bitcoin is 1.0. I like that, I like that. Yeah, and you know, we've known each other for a long time. I don't know if you know, but you know, my big thing on 3.0s is where it's at. Right. So, hey, hey, crypto world, let yeah. me ask you something. How many of you guys used an iPhone mm -hmm. 1? Right, seven of you, right? And then so, you know, nobody used an iPhone 1. <laughs> nobody, nobody used an iPhone 2. But when the iPhone 3 came out, it's a big deal, right? Even old stuff like Lotus Notes, it was three. Lotus 1, 2, 3 was version 3. All this stuff. Uh, what's some Novell Netware was 3. Um, Windows 3.11. Okay. How many okay. people use Windows 1? You said the iPhone already, yeah? Nobody, right? So when stuff gets to the third version, that's when it goes, Yeah. Right? And so that's cool. uh, here we are on third gen blockchain technology. We're sitting here at the precipice and we just had this awesome EOS announcement I know. tonight. Uh, so not only did they have a 3.0 a a technology that was a year ago today came out, right? June right. 1 last year was the birth of 3.0 technology in EOS IO. But now they've had one year to work on it and they just released some killer things that really make it like the 3.1 or 3.2, just like Windows. Windows was 3.1. That's what Windows 3.1 is what everybody used. Right. They didn't even really use 3.0. But when Windows 3.1 came out, that's when it kind of got nuts. Okay. And of course, their 4.0 was Windows 95, and that's when they had, you know, the rocks. The um, I was thinking the Beatles. It's not the Beatles. Uh, who is it? Uh, Start me up. Who is it? Uh, Mick Jagger. Okay. That's when you know when Windows 95 was released. It was really Windows 4.0. And that's when mass adoption all over the whole world took over, right? So we're at 3.0 right now. Does that mean every Tom, Dick, and Harry is going to start using cryptocurrency tomorrow? No. No. We still got to wait for 4.0 to come out, and that's going to be another year or two. But a lot of people started using Windows. A lot of people started buying iPhones. Not the whole world, right? But enough in the 3.0. So that's what that's what really I think just happened, kind of tonight, and and you know obviously a year ago was a baby. Yeah, yeah, and they're putting out 2.0 tonight. Sorry, that was one of the other announcements, but the EOS IO 2.0. Yeah, EOS uh, IO 2.0 is kind of like blockchain 4.0. Right, right. That's, that's the reality. It'd be like saying, you know, DOS or something. Oh, we got DOS <laughs> 5.0, okay. <laughs> All right, well, so uh, second on the list that, uh, that we discussed was the, uh, let's see, it was Coinbase, and then it was not... YubiKey. 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 Okay, so YubiKey. Yeah. Which I had never heard of. Yeah. Uh, you, however, had. And yeah. explain YubiKey. Well, so I uh, am involved in some other businesses that do a lot with, uh, with IT security. And so YubiKey is like big time. So YubiKey is, you know, has a lot of different ways to do it, but a famous way they call it this key is this physical key you plug in to your computer and it's two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication so that you can have more than one authentication. Because if you think about it right now, if there is a um, Bitcoin wallet on the internet, in the cloud, then it's a public blockchain. So if you had a thousand Bitcoin in your Bitcoin wallet, okay, nice. Well, the whole world knows, they may not know it's tied to you, but they know here are all the wallets with more than a hundred Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a hacker, I go, Let's hammer those. Yeah. Let's see if we can crack those passwords, right? right? And they're being attacked constantly. So if you can actually break, you know, when you see the news where somebody goes, oh, Fred lost $5 million in Bitcoin, that's not because the Bitcoin network had some problems. Right. It's because his password was sitting in his uh, Windows machine and it said mybitcoinpassword.txt and it's sitting on his desktop. <laughs> yep. And he was over there doing something else, surfing some other website. He got attacked, the attacking bot right. it's all it's not humans right bot got in the bot got into his windows machine looked on his desktop and said oh you know he my, labeled my it. btc <laughs> password.txt hmm opened it up took the string applied it to his chain removed the five million dollars worth of bitcoin or whatever 
and it makes national news, it makes global news. Right. Look at how unstable Bitcoin is. He just lost $5 million. Well, okay, two things about that. Bitcoin's not actually not unstable, it's pretty doggone stable. He's unstable, because he did that. <laughs> so that's when but people- that's inherent with Bitcoin. So that's when, that's when the treasurers and the other one, the ledgers and stuff like that, yeah, they yeah. said, oh, okay. well, we've got this cold wallet, yeah. and you're gonna be able to take it off. Well, the idea is, hey, I'm gonna take, I'm not going to put my private key to my Bitcoin wallet on my laptop or on my phone where it can get hacked and the hacker can suck it out and then go get my money and suck it out. Okay. But guess what? Bitcoin's still on the internet. Right. So. What, what I didn't understand is I, I just assumed it was another Trezor. No. And that's the part that, that I would like you to explain. Yeah. So, you know, if you have a user ID and password to a bank account, almost all of us have a two-factor authentication. You gotta go to your phone, you gotta use your, your Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator, and it gives a little six digits that changes every 60 seconds. Right, right, that's why I said a lot of people in the crypto world are accustomed to that already because of all the exchanges. That the, we, the, so, so right, a lot of people put their money in an exchange right now because they're hoping, A, they wanna trade stuff, but B, they're hoping that this entity can protect them somehow um, because you know, they may have pseudo keys or something like that, or pseudo wallets inside of the exchange wallet system that abstracts whose wallet that is and how to attack it. And you know, the attackers might not see a uh, thousand BTC in one wallet. They, the, 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 the exchanges of the world might be moving stuff around and making it hard for the attackers to get in. I got you. Right, they're doing stuff to protect themselves. Sure. And um, that's smart. Right. So. So a lot of people put their stuff in the exchanges. Plus it allows you to use a password, a normal password. <laughs> allows you to use a normal password, but, it, but, but you, hopefully it allows you to use a user ID, a password, and Two -factor a second factor, which makes it you know, an order of magnitude harder to get into that account. Okay, and, but, and, and so that is not YubiKey? It is YubiKey. It is YubiKey. Two-factor authentication. It's just that what EOSIO is planning on doing is having the YubiKey work directly with the wallet. Because for a while, cryptocurrency said, oh, we use cryptocurrency, you don't need banks. Well, it's kind of like, well, you don't need banks, but you need exchanges. Because if you want to have some security, you have to have exchanges, kind of wild ideas about moving stuff around and backing it up with cash, because oh my gosh, it's dangerous. Okay. But now, you don't really need exchanges. Now you can just put money in your EOS wallet or any EOS IO2 technology, any of the, you know, there's thousand chains getting ready to come out for EOS IO, right? This chain, this chain, this thing. But they'll all be able to be able to use your YubiKey that says, hey, I have a public key, I have a private key, user ID, password, but I also have a YubiKey 2FA that's in my pocket. And unless you're me, unique identity, you can't and steal my money. And so it's different because that's actually integrated into the code of EOSIO and it, it's not just, oh, I'm putting it on a, a cold storage device. Right. It's a third level or, or not third, but. Yeah, the, the cold storage treasures and ledgers are kind of like a weak hack idea to go, eh, oh, we're kind of helping you. We're helping right. you not be stupid. I never bought one because I kept thinking I can just write it down. That's, there's no difference, right? Yeah, if you write it down, put it in your physical wallet in your back pocket, it's the same as, it's the same thing. Same thing. Somebody steals your wallet. Right. Okay, you got a problem. So you would have this cold thing that right. that you have to plug in and do all this stuff that Treasure and Ledger do, which you know it's it's got some value. Mm -hmm. But the YubiKey is, I mean, Google uses YubiKey to secure the Google network. They were, yeah. It's a pretty big deal. Wow, okay, wow, Google does. And you know, something else that shocked me is you said that uh, Yubi doesn't do other cryptos. And, and I don't- and I don't already, know that they do. I, don't, I have not heard of them doing any other ones. There okay, could well, be one okay, out Okay, let there. me rephrase that then. It's not that they, they're not a crypto company. Nope. What are they? They're a security company. For? Multi-factor authentication. For in big companies, Google. Well, this, the is biggest. this is competition with LastPass. Huh? LastPass uses YubiKey. Wow. Okay. It doesn't. It, it, it asked is, me if I wanted what I would be transferring over, and LastPass was one. Of them. Yeah. If you have LastPass, which I love, you can use a YubiKey with LastPass. There's. Can you just, oh, that's awesome. 
Yeah, and it's love that. that's right. See, so see, like um, so, YubiKey was doing multi-factor authentication prior to this, but EOSIO integrated it into their software code. EOSIO said, you know, who's the best at doing multi-factor authentication on the Earth? YubiKey. We're going to integrate. We're going to write our code with EOSIO to naturally integrate with YubiKey. Genius. Bam. It's so smart because <laughs> so we're all the Fortune 500 companies. Right. Right. So now the Fortune 1 cryptocurrency, EOSIO, is now doing it too. Right. And the other cryptocurrencies should be racing to do the same thing. Yeah. I think I think what you're going to see is EOSIO is the leader in innovation in this area, right? And you're going to see other cryptocurrencies go, absolutely, we need to make ours. And they could do it with uh, Google Authenticator, which is free, you know, on your phone. But the problem with, and there's nothing wrong with Google Authenticator necessarily. It's a great, it's better than not having two-factor authentication. Right. But, you know, there's a lot of this phone... Um, uh, what's the phone? What's the thing inside the phone? The little chip. Uh, losing my mind. Your SIM card. Yes. There's a SIM card that goes into your phone, right? There's the idea of this thing called SIM hacking, where where uh, the hacker calls AT and T and says that they're you, and that they, they, you lost your SIM card, and AT and T does a weak NYC know your customer and go, oh well, you know, whatever. Okay, you proved it to us. Here's a, here's a new SIM, we've reset your SIM. Well, they actually have copied your SIM information onto a phone, and they could be in another country. So your phone works with your current SIM card that's not really damaged, and then they've got a copy, they've made a clone of your SIM card. Oh, wow. And when they do that, you know how you can go like, you know, you go to your bank and the bank says, hey, I'm logging in on the bank, and the bank says, hey, I just texted you a number. And then you type the number in. Oh. Well, they they wait for you to do that, and you go to your bank, and then the text the number. Well, the number gets texted to that SIM card. Well, the SIM card comes to you, and, and it, it comes also. to them too. Or they have already hacked your. They bought your password and user ID on the dark web. Right. So they already have your user ID password because you you use the same one on LinkedIn that you use at your at your Bank of America. So they're guessing that you you've done that right, or they figured it out right. And through logging on, and because they get user ID, password, it takes that, it goes, okay, here's your, here's your, mm -hmm. I need your six digits from, I'm going to text you. Well, the text now comes to them. They get texted your second factor authentication because they just copied your SIM. Well, you can't do that with YubiKey. Right. So, Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, so that's an app key. on your phone, only, is two factor, but it only goes so far. Yeah. But the YubiKey is like, well, did you go get into his pocket? <laughs> Then guess what? You don't have that. So code. key because you know before cryptocurrencies, you didn't carry around thousands of dollars on your cell phone, which was you did in your bank account. Your mo your mobile app is and your true. web. Yeah, the first things that got two factor were people's online bank accounts. Okay. okay, that happened ten years ago. It's only you know maybe five years ago that people go, oh my gosh, I probably need to do this. Right. And if anybody watching this today, if you don't have two factor on your bank accounts. You need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Right? And guess what? Your new bank accounts are cryptocurrency wallets, and so you need to be two-factoring those. So people didn't trust online bank accounts wow. until they got two-factor authentication. People don't trust cryptocurrency wallets until they get, guess what? Tonight. Right. Tonight. June 1st, 2019. Right. Two-factor authentication. That's, it's... We were and, here. And we until, were here. I think until Brian and I have talked to you about this, we weren't as excited about that piece. And, and it's starting to set in that it's it's kind of the critical piece. If I was a big time investor, if I was a million dollar cryptocurrency holder, you know, because you got that kind of wealth, let's say, you got a hundred million dollars, anybody that's got a hundred million dollars has a million dollars worth of cryptocurrency. Or <laughs> if they didn't have a million dollars worth of cryptocurrency because they like their money and they'd like it to stay inside of their domain, right? after tonight, they have a way of doing it because they can have the same two-factor YubiKey that they have on their bank accounts. I was going to say because they could go to Coinbase. <laughs> but they could go to Coinbase yesterday, but the Coinbase could get hacked and stolen from. It's not Coinbase that's getting hacked, by the way. It's the user IDs and passwords and stuff. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, actually, yeah. Coinbase made a big deal tonight about how they've never been hacked. There's got to there's, uh, be uh, some, a lot of benefits to the fact of uh, to developers. 
um, developing apps. With it's got to be a huge this, draw. You know, being able to have this, you know, uh, in, you know, integrated into their apps or, or their apps built on top of this. There is not enough security in this world. Okay, especially on the white hats, you get know, the white hats and the black hats, the bad guys, the good guys, right? Well, so, no, explain that, because a lot of people don't. Cowboys, you know, the old cowboy movies. You, you, anybody has ever seen a black and white or just colored in cowboy movie, what they used to do is, you know, the, the posse would ride along, and if you looked at them, they predominantly had white hats on. And, you know, the bad guy, the old timey movies, the bad guys would go, I'm going to get them. They had black hats on. Okay. So black cowboy hats. So that that's been carried all. So the, in the programmer world or in the, the tech, hacker in world. the tech lore tech, world, tech in, the, world. In, the, in the hacker tech lore world, the idea was, oh, you're a black hat, it means you're a bad guy. Okay. Oh, you're a white hat, that means you're defending, you know, Dodge City from the bad guys. Okay. So that's you know, cool. there's a lot less white hats out there than there are black hats on Earth. There's a lot of bad guys trying to steal money because they can sit in their pajamas and steal money from. And I'm not talking about cryptocurrency. I'm talking about U.S. dollars. USD, right. I think I think the total number of, you know, money that's laundered and stolen and all that kind of stuff in U.S. dollars, the estimate is about three trillion dollars a year. Oh gosh. Three trillion. Oh wow. So sitting your PJs and stealing, you know, millions and billions from people is can be worth it. Is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So putting in better security to rein that in is a right. big is a big deal. Wow. That's it's it's pretty. That's gonna make, it's gonna make uh, EOS more desirable for developers to um, start developing on EOS rather than Ethereum, because just because of that. Well, listen, you're right. Having two multi-factor authentication, having horizontal chain growth and single chain speed growth, so that we can see Dan's vision of saying, "Hey, well, you know, twenty-seven thousand transactions per second to beat Visa. Who cares?" Right. How about a million transactions per second? Millions of transactions per second. That's what Dan's after. That's what's going to happen because you take all the side chains and add them all up, and guess what? You've got hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of transactions per second. Instead of there's one Ethereum or something like that, and it goes seven transactions per second. Who cares? And that's what they call horizontal scaling, and that's where essentially like one chain. He said he increased the speed of EOSIO 12 times since one year ago. Mm -hmm. Well, that's on a single chain. So that's 12 times on a single chain, also 12 times on another chain, 12 times on another chain. That's my understanding. That is, that is how you do horizontal scaling, and that's how you take that's it up to millions of transactions a second, which is pretty cool, really. It's almost a matter of, you, he doesn't have to increase the speed ever again, but it'll get there. It'll yeah. get to a million. He's yeah. just going to make it a lot faster with EOSIO 2.0. Yeah. Um, last but not least, voice. Yeah. <laughs> First... First and foremost, voice.com. How much do you think they paid for that? Whew, boy. <laughs> a lot. You're the one that educated me on the five letter internet domain. Single syllable. Single syllable. Five characters. Five characters. Dot com, still today. Dot, dot IO com. is pretty hot for the turbo geeks, but dot com for most of most humans, most earthlings are still pretty into dot coms, right? Yes. If you got the dot com, you must be somebody. Right. So voice.com. I remember I bought into buy.com back in the day three letters three i was letters. like this is going to make it and this canadian hacker like a 16 year old hacked yahoo ebay and buy.com or something like that pets.com was another one uh they got hacked really early on and two of them were startups i think pets.com and buy.com were startups that that ipo just recently and uh he hacked them all because back then you could be a 16 year old kid there was no two-factor two authentication and he got in there to the SQL servers, and I don't know if y'all know this, but in a standard Microsoft SQL server, the standard password is a default password. SA is the user ID, it's system administrator, and the default password is blank. So he literally just got in there and got behind the scenes and SA blank got into, it was Yahoo, I'm, I'm saying a bunch of stuff, but I think it was Yahoo and eBay, if I'm not mistaken. They got taken down by a 16 year old from Canada but also pets.com and buy.com got taken out. So my IPO went bam, like this. <laughs> uh, it was not good. Okay. But the bottom line is that I, I thought, like you said, buy.com, how right. can this screw up? Right. Pets.com, how can this screw up? Well, hopefully, we'll see what happens with voice.com, but voice.com is five characters, one syllable, dot com. They must have paid a pretty penny for that thing. They had to. They had but, to. But the implications are incredible. Right. So let's explain it real quick. Do you want to do, you wanna do sure. it? Sure. Okay. So for those of you who are old enough, and it's funny because this is not that long ago, but MySpace.com. 
that was the beginning, right? Mark Zuckerberg saw MySpace.com, said, huh, I think I can do this for college kids, what, what MySpace.com is doing for 10 year olds. I love this, yeah. And decided to create Facebook.com, right? MySpace is, you know, eight characters and two syllables. Right. And almost nobody even knows what it is anymore. It's over, right? right? Nobody uses MySpace.com. So then here's the next legacy tool. It's the current tool right now, but it's also getting legacy. Most millennials really use Facebook. That's what my grandmother uses, right? right? So most people are using something else, Instagram or something else. But Instagram is three characters. There were three syllables. Snapchat. Snapchat's two, and you know, it's okay. So those are all kind of neato, but voice will be <laughs> the thing that kills Facebook and a lot of these other multi-syllable things that are kind of offshoots you know vine anybody use vine anymore no right yeah. so there's there's these smaller things but voice is going to be huge because it uh it runs on the blockchain it has this point system in it with these voice tokens so it's tokenization of social media right and facebook is kind of like you know running as hard and as fast as they can they're kind of like ethereum boy i wish we'd have thought of this we have this legacy hey they've done well they've made billions of dollars but uh, Ethereum did well too, right? So Ethereum will be in the history books uh, in five or 10 years, and Facebook will be in the history books in five or 10 years, just like MySpace is in the history books, right? Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's no different. And there are gonna be new stuff coming out, but I think one of the newer ones coming out is this thing announced tonight, right. voice.com, a social media voice for a human. It human, key. It cannot be easily gamed. You right. can't have these burner accounts. You know, originally Facebook said, you gotta be over 13 years old. This has to be you. They tried to have unique identity, mm -hmm. but it, it failed, right? There's so many fake, you know, accounts that are on there. People have multiple Facebook accounts. They don't check it very well. And uh, gosh, foreign countries have Facebook accounts and they're in there pumping stuff in. Facebook is going for the greed, right? They want the money. They want the money. They've, they've, they've gone away from I really care about one Facebook account for one human. I remember when I first signed up for Facebook, it, all the rules were like, only one for one human, right? And they tried, but then greed got to them, and they said, you, you feel like a human. And now there's all these bots that go in there and just modify everything, right? So it's, it's kind of trash, and a lot of people hate Facebook now. A lot of people right. move it off of Facebook. So if voice can truly do unique identity to one human, yes, and then and that's what, right. they can get voice to tokens for, for putting in content. Putting in content and liking content. And liking content. So it's just, con they called it contributing. Mm -hmm. So if you contribute to the voice ecosystem, you can earn voice tokens. Any human. Right. And through unique identity, they can verify that. Let's read this real quick. It says on the voice.com website, social as it should be. We think social networking is due for a major rework. From the bot mobs, to the data tracking, to the shady algorithms behind our feeds, Social media has not been a good friend to us. Been nasty. Isn't that straightforward though? I like that part about it. You yeah, know? Yeah. They're they're not gonna they're not gonna shy away from it anyway. Uh, of course, here you can sign up for the beta on their dot com. But the next uh, advert is "Are you a human?" I like that too. Yeah. So that's that's why I questioned. Well, so a business can't sign up for Voice, right? How are you gonna get a unique identity? Because I believe unique identity would be, would involve me verifying you're David Pence. Well, it says, are you? Let's read this. This is important. It says, are you a human? If so, you're are you're ready to make a profile. We use special authentication system to make sure every user on Voice is an actual person. Okay. No robo mobs. No catfish. No burner accounts. And what are they referring to? Almost all of the other social media networks who have chosen greed over uh, a great social network have allowed burner accounts to go in there, right? Burner accounts, just fake accounts. Fake accounts. Okay, what's a robo mob? Like a, uh, uh, you can pay to be well liked in Facebook or LinkedIn or something like that. And there are third party companies that you can go Google and they'd be like, would you like to be really, would you like a million clicks? Uh, would you like a million likes? Well, how do you think they're doing that? They don't get a million humans and that's what the mob, the robo mob is robotic oh. AI. There's AI mob. So there's AI that logs on and says, yes, I'm a 13 year old girl. And it goes in there and click, 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 click. And that click. gets them better rankings and more views. Yeah, and so there's programmers in, in somewhere who have set up a robo mob 
they they I had advertise. No idea. They advertise. Would you like to be popular? And there's a lot of people who go, I, I would like to be popular. Then you pay us, and our robotic fake 13 year old girls and 27 year old males and whatever ver go in there. So think about how bad it is. Do you do you think that Facebook, who originally said one human for one account, right. but have totally gone greed, right? right? Totally gone greed. Do you think they know that RoboMobs are at, are logging in and making this popular and it's completely fake? Of course they do. But they're a multi-billion dollar company. They don't care anymore. At this point, it's all about, we need to make Getting, more money. Get more advertising money. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Wow. All so right. it's over. Well, that was sort of what I think crushed Steam it was the, the bots. They got all the bots that started coming in and then you had to be in a certain circle or you weren't going to get paid. And boy, just it, the distribution was horrible, first of all. Yeah. And that was one thing they said in the video tonight was that this is the best distribution of any coin at all time because why? You only get it if you're a human and you only get it if you have unique identity. And you only, sorry, you only get it if you contribute to the network. You know what I mean? If you contribute to the system. We'll see. We'll see. Right. So you can't be a whale. No, they, there will never be a, well, you can be a whale, sorry, eventually. Yeah, yeah who knows? You can't start that way. Humans are pretty good at gaming systems, but this looks like an, a great new attempt to have it. Well, a couple of things about the system is that, one, it's a closed loop. This is, I think, this is what we saw on the EOS channel, but it's a closed loop, which means the, the tokens don't have a buy-sell feature in the contract. They're just transferable. Which is, like you said, explain, you said it's a little bit like a movie that we both watched before. Oh, Ready Player One, yeah. yeah. We talked about this earlier. I think Ready Player One's pretty cool because the guy in the movie, you know, he doesn't have a lot of money, he can't go buy tokens, so he goes in and he earns tokens by doing the race car. In a virtual the, reality. In a virtual reality, he's in there running around doing the race car and other stuff, and he finally, I don't blow it for anybody here, but he, he at least you'll figure out he gets the first key and when he gets the first key, which is a big deal, every human in the world is pretty much trying to do that, uh, he gets a bunch of tokens. It's tokenization, right? Right. And what does he do? He goes and gets uh, the holy hand grenade, and he gets, he gets but, but that's, that's a virtual thing that he buys. It's right. very expensive. But he also gets a pretty expensive like pressure suit that upgrades his ability to play the virtual reality, and that's a physical thing that's shipped to him in a right. box. Right, right, right. So it'll be pretty neat to have people going into voice and they will be earning these virtual uh, voice tokens. And then let's see how this evolves, but one day maybe a FedEx box shows up for somebody and they actually earn enough voice tokens that, you know, the, the, the incredible thing is, does that voice token ever have a US dollar or Chinese RMB right. value, or is that not even important anymore? Does somebody like Amazon or something go look for 500 voice tokens, we will you know, ship you this thing, and you get this Amazon box that shows up with the pressure suit. And and Amazon would want, who's, who shipped it, sorry? Yeah, Amazon. Amazon would want to do it because they would want those voice tokens to use maybe... To advertise to adver on the voice network. There you go. So there's the, there's the tokenization of the... If they keep it in such a way that they can't give you fiat money to right. advertise, if the only way you can do advertising is with voice tokens, then all of a sudden the businesses say, well, how do we get voice tokens? Well, you got to buy them from the humans. Okay, well, how do we do that? Well, you got to trade, and right. so it kind of sets up this, you know, it's kind of like back to seashells in America in the early days or something like that. It's right. just different. Right. You know, it's not bad. It's not great. It's just different. So that's kind of interesting. Well, I know like uh, when, when Dan developed Steam it, quickly a D-Tube came along, which was decentralized YouTube. And on, um, it was neat because when I was posting on D-Tube, it would also post on Steam it because it was utilizing the same blockchain. So, and, and those two applications were simply kind of windows to the blockchain. So, in a sense, voice.com or voice, whatever you do on voice could be, it's on the blockchain. So, it's also accessible through other applications. So, you could do, you could use it for a Telegram, a version of Telegram, a version of Twitter, a version of um, YouTube, right? Make it customized for that specific use case, right? So, I'm assuming that voice is just the sort of the beginning of what we might see you know i totally agree i think voice is a probably going to be the best blockchain social media app that will be in existence in the next couple of years and uh we'll see we'll see how it well one thing's for sure i told brian in a couple of months we'll know sort of what the uh size of the eosio community is because i'm pretty sure they will all sign up for voice 
Would you agree? I'm signing up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool deal, man. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I'm good. I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. Love it. Appreciate it, bud.